name's Hannah and I'm so excited you joined me for Children's Church today. To start, I have a question for you. How many of you have ever seen Jesus? Some of, us, some of us may feel like we've seen Jesus, while other of us may not be so sure. But if we've never seen him, how do we know if he's real and that he loves us? Our parents and teachers tell us about him, the Bible tells us, and he visits us through people in our own lives. Jesus lived thousands of years ago, but he sends people to us today to help us learn about him and believe in him. Even though Jesus sends us people for help, it can still be pretty hard to believe that we, what we read and hear about Jesus sometimes. In today's Bible story, you'll meet a man named Thomas, who was one of Jesus' disciples. After Jesus rose from the dead, Thomas had a hard time believing that it really happened. Today's Bible story is Doubting Thomas from John 20, 19 to 31. We read today from the Spark Story Bible. Doubting Thomas. The disciples were hiding in a house the night Jesus rose from the dead. They were afraid. Bam! They locked all the doors. Jesus came and stood by them. Peace be with you, he said. The disciples looked up in surprise. Jesus showed them his hands and his side so that they would know it was him. The disciples were very happy. Again, Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. God has sent me to you. Now it's your turn to go. Tell the rest of the world about me. Jesus breathed on them in a very special way. He said, with this breath, I will always be in your hearts, even when I am in heaven. You now have the power to do the things I've asked you to do. Thomas was the only disciple not there that night. When he got back, the others excitedly told him about Jesus' visit. I don't believe you, Thomas said. I believe when I can touch Jesus' wounds. A week later, Thomas and the other disciples were in the same house. Jesus came again and stood with them. Peace be with you, he said to them. Thomas, Jesus commanded, come here. Give me your hands. Put your figure on the wounds in my hand. Put your hand by the wound in my side. Do not doubt anymore. It's time for you to believe. Thomas's eyes popped. My Lord and my God, he exclaimed. Jesus answered him, You believe because I am here with you, and you've touched me. Think of those who have not seen me, but believe in me anyway. You should believe, even when you cannot see it for yourself. Jesus helped Thomas believe, and then Thomas helped share Jesus' loves with people all over the world. Thomas started in Israel with other disciples. He started in Israel, sharing the good news about Jesus. And then he traveled all the way to India. But he didn't have planes or trains or cars. It would have been a very hard journey to get there. And from India, it traveled all around the world. Even many, many years after Jesus and the disciples lived, we can still believe in Jesus, whether we can see him or not. Disciples spread his love, Jesus' love, all over the world, and that's how we all know about it today. I have a few questions for you guys. How does Jesus show himself to you? What does he do to show you that you love them? Last week, I was on a conference call with some different people from our church, and we were sharing how we saw God in the last few days. There were so many different answers because everyone sees Jesus differently. Some people said on walks, by getting phone calls, by being in nature, just having some peace and quiet. Who helps you learn about Jesus today? There's so many different people who can. Maybe it's your teacher, your Sunday school teacher, or your mom, your dad, your brother, sister, aunt and uncle, grandma and grandpa. And you can be one of the people who helps other people learn about Jesus too. Do you think it was easy or hard for the disciples to believe that Jesus had come back from the dead and why? I think it'd be kind of hard to believe at first because I've never seen that happen before. I think, but once I found out that it was really Jesus, I'd be so excited. Welcome to our 
first circle time. We're gonna have a small song, um, and then we will, um, I don't know, we'll see. Jesus taught the disciples that they should believe even when they couldn't see him. And Jesus said that he would always be with them in their uh, hearts. Can you show me where your hearts are? Where uh, are your hearts? Right here, where's uh, your heart? Right here. Hey. Left. Yeah, on your left side. Jesus said that he would always be with them in their hearts. Jesus is in our hearts too. Jesus is in our hearts too. And he helps us to believe. We're going to sing a song about where we can find Jesus when we believe. We're going to sing a song together. All right, we're going to sing a song together, and it's kind of a catch, catch on as you go song. So it's a catch on as you go song, and it has some motion. All right, are you ready for it? Can we start? With, we start where we, we're searching. We're searching. We're searching. All right, ready? Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? I don't know. I don't know. He is not here with us. He is not here with us. He is gone. He is gone. All right. And then what happened on the third day? Do you remember? The disciples felt sad because Jesus had died on the cross. But what happened on Easter morning? What? What? He is back. He is risen. Yeah, he is risen. Jesus is alive. So then we say, remember, Jesus is always with us. Where? In our hearts, yeah. So, here is Jesus, here is Jesus. He's alive, he's alive. He's our Lord and Savior. He's our Lord and Savior. We believe, we believe. Great job, turn again where Jesus is. Tell me again where Jesus is. Yes, that's fun to sing, isn't it? Yeah. Where is Jesus? Aaron. In our hearts, because we believe. Yes, where is Jesus? In our hearts, because we believe. Great job. All right, we are going to sing Jesus Loves Me. You guys know this song? Yes. All right, all right, all right. Are you guys ready? Yes, that's the song. All right, ready? Jesus loves me. Closing prayer together. Today we're going to do something special though. When we pray, when I say the line, unite us all in children of God, you're going to squeeze the person's hand who's next to you. So if you guys can hold hands before we start praying, if you're by yourself, I invite you to go like this. And that way when, we, when I say that line, unite all of us in children of God, 
we squeeze our hands so that we can be together with all of the children of God. Dear Jesus, you came to the world so many years ago, but even today, we praise your name. Thank you for coming, coming to us through our friends and teachers. Thank you for showing your love to all of us in so many ways. You have faith in your word today, even though we cannot see you. Unite us all in children of God. Amen. Amen.